trigonometry review, finding unknown angles. We will look at, actually first, just why we use an inverse trig function, then an example of finding the unknown angles, and using degrees and minutes and seconds. I don't need you to write down this next bit, I just want to look at why we use inverse sine, cos and tan when we're finding an unknown angle. I've just drawn a triangle and I'm just going to focus on the sine ratio. Sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Now what this is saying is that for any right angled triangle with a 30 degree angle, if I look at sine of that angle opposite over hypotenuse, that's 2 over 4, which is 1 half. This diagram is telling me that sine of 30 degrees equals 1 half. That is, the hypotenuse is going to be twice as, oh sorry, let's use 1 half. The opposite will be half the hypotenuse for every right angle triangle when I'm looking at the 30 degree angle like that. If I use my calculator and type in sine 30, it tells me it's a half. So that's saying if you've got a right angle triangle and you take the opposite over the hypotenuse of, a 30, of 30 degrees, you'll get a half. Now, this information is useful for finding an unknown side, but it's also useful for finding an unknown angle. Imagine I didn't have this 30 degrees here, and all I knew was that whatever this angle was, sine of the angle was a half. And I know that because if I'm looking at that angle, 2 over 4 is a half. I want to find out just the angle on its own. Now, sine of the angle is a half. I need to cancel out the sine and get the angle on its own. Now, when you cancel something out in an equation, you do its opposite. And the opposite of sine is inverse sine. So if I do inverse sine, sorry about this ugly type of working which you're not allowed to do anymore. If I do inverse sine of both sides, I'll get the angle equals inverse sine of a half. I really don't need you to write that bit, it's just looking at why this works. And if I do inverse sine of a half, I should discover that it's 30 degrees. Second function sine to get inverse sine of a half is 30 degrees. So all we're doing when I use the inverse key is I'm saying, hey, I know the ratio, what's the angle? When I say sine of 30 degrees, I'm saying, hey, I know the angle, what's the ratio? So these are completely related, they work together. If I know the angle and the side, I can find the other side. If I know two sides, I can find the angle. This is why we always use inverse sine when I'm finding an angle. Excuse me a moment. <coughs> oh, sorry. So, find the value of theta to the nearest minute. The steps are still the same. Label the sides, only the ones that we've got anything on opposite and adjacent. Nothing on the hypotenuse, I wouldn't bother labeling it. Choose and write your ratio in full. Because I have opposite and adjacent, I'll use tan of the angle is opposite over adjacent. Substitute in your values that you know. Tan of the angle is 120 over 100. And now I have tan of the angle and I want to find just the angle. So as we know, we take inverse tan of both sides. I'll be left with the angle here, and I will find inverse tan of 120 over 100. I could have simplified that down to 1.2 if I wanted. And so inverse tan of 1.2, because that was divided out, I might as well, now, I've got 50.19 degrees, and I've asked for the nearest minute. 
Now, degrees aren't usually sorry, angles aren't usually measured in fractions or decimal points of a degree. So let's just write this down. I've got 50.194 degrees. You know it's degrees because you're finding an angle. Like time, angles are measured in degrees, but then parts of a degree are minutes, and parts of a minute are seconds. And there's 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in a degree. We won't ever ask you to do degrees, minutes, and seconds in your answer at this stage, but degrees and minutes. So just having a look, this is approximately 0.2 of a degree that I've got here. So 20% of a degree, and I know that a degree is 60 minutes, so have a think about what we're going to expect as the number of minutes that we get there. And let's have a look at how to do this. To get a decimal answer into degrees and minutes and seconds, you use the angle menu, which is second function angle. And you can see they've got DMS here. And if we scroll down, you'll get to DMS. And this is saying, please put my answer into degrees, minutes, and seconds. Hit enter. 50 degrees, 11 minutes, 39 0.9 seconds. Now we round up when our seconds get past 30, not 5. We round up when we get past 30 because 30 seconds is half of a minute and we'd round up. So this will be 50 degrees 12 minutes. The symbol for minutes is a single apostrophe. The single for seconds is the double apostrophe or quotation marks. And this line here is unnecessary. You can always just show your four lines of working. So a brief mention of using degrees, minutes, and seconds. You just saw how to convert a decimal into degrees, minutes, and seconds. We might also be given an angle in degrees, minutes, and seconds and need to enter it. So to enter that you would do, if you just need 30 degrees, if I wanted sine of 30 degrees, you don't need the degrees sign. But if it was 30 degrees, 42 minutes, 30, hop into the angle menu and see we've got a degrees sign here. 30 degrees, 42 minutes, second angle, and there's the minutes sign. And if you wanted to change that into decimal, you could. Um, usually you'll be entering that and using sine, cos, or tan of that angle. To convert a decimal into degrees, minutes, seconds, 10, excuse me, 10.8 degrees, second function angle, and DMS, 10 degrees, 48 minutes. Just as an aside, you don't need this for trig. Um, this works for time as well. If you're given a decimal answer of time and you want it in hours and minutes and seconds, 1.5 hours would be one hour, 30 minutes. So if you do 1.5, second function and DMS, you'll get, as just pretend you're reading an hour instead of degrees, one hour, 30 minutes. So it's quite useful for time.